Alright, so today we're going to look at matrices and that's our final unit for this year. Um, so a matrix is a rectangular uh, array of numbers. So you, most of you have all done matrices. So we have like the square brackets and then we'll have some data inside like this. Okay, so the... Um, the data inside each of these individual things, they are called um, elements. So if you, so in this case, the one I did, there's four elements there. So um, we're going to look at different things of that. So when we talk about matrices, we often talk about their order. So the order. And what we say is we generally say how many rows it has by how many columns. So if you look up here, this one has one row, two rows, and then the columns are down here. So here's the columns and it has one, two. So the order of this matrix that I just drew there is a two by two, two rows, two columns. So just remember rows are written first or explained first. So up here in this A1, you can see you've got one, two, three rows and two columns. So it's a three by two and it has six elements. So they're called elements. So often, so here when they ask you for the order of the matrix, you have to say um, it's rows by columns. So it's sort of like a photo frame, you know, when you say you've got a two by three inch, it's the same thing, row by column. Now, order becomes important because certain rules are, um, we need to know the order for that them to be made possible and things like that. So the other thing is they'll start talking about <clears throat> the elements and say up here, they're calling this matrix A up here and they'll refer to an element like this where they'll use the little letter. So because that was called matrix A, they'll use the little letter A and then they've got this spot I and J. I represents the rows. So you might wanna say that's I and J represents what column it is. So see here where it's got um, A32, that means I have to go to row three. So if I'm, I'm in this row and I go to column two, which is this one. So they actually want me to look at that element. So negative four. So they use the letters I and J all the time. So I stands for the row and J stands for the column, what column it is. <clears throat> That's how they do that. So if we go, I'm brought up some exam questions here so you can see how this i and j comes into play so it says consider the matrix p so if you look here um, and they said element in row i and column j of matrix p is given like this that's them just explaining the rule that i is what row it is in and j is what um, all right, so as I said, they're gonna always say this PIJ. This is them just explaining the rule because it's one of those things they have to state all the time. All right, so what they said here, the elements in matrix P are determined by what rule? So here's, we've got a few options. So in this rule, they're saying, I can find the elements of the matrix by going four minus j. So remember this, the rows are i along here. So I've really only got two rows, see here, i and j, and I've got three columns. So if what they're saying, when I find this element here, I'm gonna go four minus j. So this element's j is actually one, yeah? Can you see that? So it'd be four minus one, what would that be? Three. So that does give me the answer that is there So at the moment. But you shouldn't take it for granted just because you get the first one doesn't mean necessarily that it'll work for both. So let me try, I'm going to try this one as well. So I'm going to find this spot. So that spot 
um, if I look at J, it's in three, isn't it? So what's four minus, so this would be four minus three, which would equal one. Is that that answer there? No, so then that's not the answer. So can you see what I'm doing? So I'm gonna go now and test these other ones. So I'll test this spot here. So I'm gonna test this spot here with this new rule. Now it'll be two I, so what row is it in? It's in row one. So what's two times one is two plus another one would be three. That works, doesn't it? So that's working for there. But let's go check the, purp the purple one. So what row is the purple one in? It'll be, it's in row two. Yeah, so it'll be two times two plus one. What will that equal? Five. Five. Does that equal that? No. So it's not that one. It's not this one either. So no, no. Let's go again for this third one. So if I look at, I'm looking at the first um, element there. So it's in row one, plus it's in column one, plus one. Does that equal three? So that's good. Let's check the purple position. It's in what row? Row two, yes. It's in row two, plus, uh, oh no, sorry, yeah plus column what? Three plus one equals six. So is it this one? No. Keep going. It's, it's quite tedious, isn't it? But that's what it is. It's annoying these questions, but we need to learn. So this one, the red one is row one plus two times what column it is, which is one. So that one works. Let's test the other spot that I've tried. Um, it's in row two plus two times column three. That'd be six plus two. That would be eight. Is that it? No. So God can only hope that it's this last one or I'm going through it all again. So two times one minus one plus two. Does that equal three? Yep. And then let's test this last one. I want to get two times two, because it's in row two, minus uh, three, because it's in column three, plus two. Does that equal three? Yeah, so hallelujah, we've found the answer. These ones are annoying, but everyone's getting them wrong, and so then every year they're getting put in there, again, with a twist or something different, but you slowly get it. All right, so let's go and do this next question. Um, the element, so can you see here again, I told you they're just gonna always say this little statement, just means I means row and J means column. So we know this are the I numbers, one and two, and here's the J numbers, which could be one, two, three, four. All right, let's do it again. The element, so let's test, again, we'll test position one and we'll test, Oops, sorry. We'll test position there, just to... Pardon? No, just pick two, because just in case. It won't work, generally. So I'm just picking them to make it different. All right, so let's go. We'll test this. We've got... It'd be one plus one minus one, which equals one. That works, doesn't it? So let's test the purple one. It will be two plus four minus one. That would be five. That's not it, we're out. So let's keep going. Two times one minus one plus one, does that equal, t that doesn't even equal, does it? That equals two, so that's out. I'm not even gonna bother. Um, next one, we've got two times one plus one minus two equals one, that works. So let's try the next one. We've got two times two plus four. That'd be eight minus two equals six. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here, I've got two. I've got, I found one that works. So I am going to say this is my answer and I'm going to move on in an exam. Because can you see, these are taking a little bit of my time. So if I've now found one, I've tested two spots. I've found one that's the answer. Let's move on. But what I want you to do is just put little a little asterisk here and here so when you come back and you've got time to check your work check those last two and see that they fail 
because therefore you're checking work that you haven't done already. If you go back and check what you have done, we'll probably make the same mistake. Do you understand? Because we're just gonna do the same. If you come back and check these two, say you've got one of them to work out right, you're then probably gonna pick up your error in wherever you went. Does that make sense? So try to check like that. But if we're poor on time, let's move on. So we can do that if we've got time, but let's move on. So that's what we would do, okay? All right, so everyone's got this one. So let's do this one. So the table below shows the information for matrix A and matrix um, B. So I'm gonna call that A and that one B. All right, so they're showing me a rule here is how I set up matrix A. So matrix A first is a three by three. So I'm gonna draw it out myself so I can do it. So that'd be one, two, three, a three rows oops, by three columns. So here, the rule is saying to go two times the row plus the column. So it'd be two times one is two plus one is and then, then it'll be two times two, oh, sorry, two times one plus two is four and five. So I'm using this rule and I'm working it out. When I'm in row two, it'd be two times two, which is four, plus the column, which would be five. Then, then this would be five, six, seven. And then if I do the last one, two times three is six. And then if I plus the column, it'd be seven, eight, nine. I sort of could see that there was a pattern happening there. All right, so now I'm gonna do the B. And it's also a three by three. So I'm just gonna go across there. Now this rule is pretty easy. It's just the row minus the column. So one minus one is zero. One minus two, negative one. One minus three is negative two. Then we've got two minus one is one, two minus two is zero, two minus three is negative one, and then three minus one is two, two minus two is zero, and three minus, sorry, what is that? Three minus two, that's not right. Three minus two is what? One. And three minus three is zero. Now, down here, they want the actual question here is they want you to sum which is means add these two. We'll learn about this in the next lesson, if you didn't know, but to be able to add matrices, they have to have the same order. So do these guys have the same order? Yeah. So when you, we'll do this a little bit later as well, but when you add matrices, you simply add the same spots. So what would three plus zero would be? three, um, four plus negative one would be three, and three plus negative two is three. So you'll end up finding the answer is D if you add them. Okay, so that was question six. So the further you go down in the exam in multiple, multiple choice, the, they reckon the degree of difficulty gets harder. Or maybe not the degree of difficulty or the amount of time you might need as well. So if you look here, we did spend a little bit of a time setting up A and B, and then we had to add them. So it would have taken us a bit more time, so six. It wasn't as quick as the other ones. All right, we have different types of matrices. Now, you never get, boys, you never, okay, so we have different types of matrices. We have like a row matrix, which you can see, it simply just means there's one row. And then if you have a column matrix, it means the matrix is just simply one column. You don't ever have to define, it's not like we say define what a row matrix is, but they might say, here's some data, set it up in a row matrix. So you need to understand that you would just have one row, okay? All right, if you have a square matrix, what do you notice about a square? What about, it? what's its order? Two by two. So. Can you see a square matrix has the same amount of rows as columns? So a three by three is also a square matrix. Four by four is a square matrix, yeah? Now, if you have a diagonal matrix, um, you'll see 
There's only numbers on the diagonals and where, what is everything else? It's just a zero, okay? So if they said a diagonal matrix, it means you're seeing only numbers on a diagonal. This is actually called, see when you, if you start up here at the top um, left hand corner and go down to the bottom right hand corner, that diagonal is actually called the leading diagonal. Yeah, so you could probably have a diagonal going the other way. This one's a diagonal matrix with the, it on the leading diagonal. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, an identity matrix, good, is, hopefully it comes up here, but anyway, identity matrix has numbers on the diagonal. It is a diagonal, but it's only one. It's only the number one. So that's a identity matrix, and so is, so say I had a three by three, I would have that. So it has num the number one on the leading diagonal. Only number one. Only number one. That's an identity matrix, okay? Um, we'll learn about that later anyway. So you can see that on the diagonal, it's just ones. All right. Um, once again, this is a little bit of in the new um, thing. I haven't seen too many questions, but a triangular matrix, it just means there's numbers in the top triangle. So can you see these are all square? Maybe take a little note that these are um, square matrices along here. You can't have a diagonal if it's not square. So square matrices. Same with the triangle ones. Yeah. Okay. And a lower triangular one is just numbers in the bottom. Okay. I've never really seen a question or a very easy question just like what type of matrix is this and it's in the multi choice. Um, I don't know why but anyway we'll just cover it. A symmetric matrix, we might need to just notice this. So if you look, you've got the leading diagonal along there. Now, can you see that in a symmetric matrix, so it is going to be a square one, sorry. It is going to be a square matrix, but can you see this, like that red line is like a mirror. And if you look opposite, can you see that the number is the same? So see here, there's the mirror, there's three and three, yeah? Can you see four and four is like looking in a mirror on the diagonal, yeah? And five and five. So same here, so we can say, see, two and two, and then four and four, there. it's like a mirror image across that diagonal. That's what a symmetric matrix is, all right? So um, you, might, you might write an answer in your exam, so you get to it, and it might be one of these, and they might say, what type of matrix is this? So you might have to note that, oh, yeah, this one's a symmetric because the numbers are the same. All right, so, sorry, here, Campbell, we've got that identity matrix. So we see identities matrix has a one on the leading diagonal. Leading diagonal um, has ones and then zeros elsewhere. What you need to remember, and a good thing to help you with problem solving with matrices, is remember this acts like um, a number one. A number one. So what do I mean by, if I do three times one, if I times something by one, what do I get? Oh, sorry. If I times three by one, what do I get? I get three. So can you see, if you times something by one, you get itself, don't you? You get what you had. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if I go matrix A, ooh, sorry, matrix A times an identity matrix, which is often given with an I, can you see I'm going to get matrix A because it's like timesing it by one. Does that make sense? Yeah? So you've got to remember, like, that will help you. An identity matrix is like a number one. If you times it by if a matrix by an identity, you just get itself back. All right, a null matrix just has zeros and two matrices are this equal if they have the same order and all the corresponding elements. So they're only the same if everything is exactly the same. So you can see everything here is exactly um, the same. All right. 
if you're asked to transpose a matrix, all you have to do is swap the rows and, with, um, and to a column. So if you have a look here, this, this one has a row there. If I transpose it, it becomes a column. Can you see that? And if I have this, oh, sorry. Um, this row became this column, yeah? And finally, this row became that column. That's all you have to do. Now, you will see them in the exam. Sorry if I'll just zoom in a little bit here. In the exam, they may refer to it with a little t, oh, good. With a little t there. Um, you have to, that means you have to transpose it. And that's all you have to do. You need to know that the order will change, won't it? So here we had a, a three by two and then it went to a two by three, okay? Now the calculator actually does transpose them for you. It's obviously pretty quick to do it in your head. So for, say here, this is exam question, but Jacob, it was exam question number one. So it's the, e the easiest question for your section. So you can see all you have to do is make that a column. So there it is there. And if I do this row, that had to become a column and there it is there. So there's your answer. Okay, let's just, I'll show you. All right, let's go and do this one here. So yeah, I'll do, I'll print it in a minute. So with this question, Okay, with this one, this is in the short answer. It's come out of that. So the number of whole hours that um, each of the 110 cars had been parked was recorded in um, at 1 p.m. in matrix R below. So it shows the number of cars parked for one, two, three hours here, uh, or four, and then each area they're in. So it then had the area you're in, you're either in A, B, or C. They want you to transpose it. So here I go, I'm gonna transpose it. That means my columns, my rows are gonna become columns. Oh God, three, four. And these will be um, the rows. So if you look, I'm gonna have three, six, 22, 19. Then I'm gonna have one, 10, seven, two, one, three, 10, 26. Now, here's where they're going to catch you. You need to know how to understand it. So they said, explain the element in row three, and so that'd be down here, and column two, so that's here. So you have to um, say, what does that represent? So it represents that you are in, in area C, yeah? There are three cars that had been parked for what? How long? Been parked for two hours, yeah? So that's what they're looking for. And that's, that's a short answer question with the transpose. Or oh, do you guys have this question?